Good evening, friends. We are reading in the book of Genesis for day, we are on day 24 of Bible 365. In the book of Genesis today, we're going to read uh, chapters 4, 5, and 6. Um, we're still reading about Adam and Eve and what happened in the garden. They actually were just um, dismissed from the garden. And let's find out what happens in chapter 4. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Now, if you think about why the Lord was not um, respectful of Cain's offering, notice that Abel brought the firstborn. So he brought the first fruit, the best of his um, flock to the Lord. And Cain, it just said, brought an offering of the fruit. So it didn't specify the first fruit. And, you know, that's what the Lord requires. We're always to give our first and our best to the Lord. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you and you should rule over it. But Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. And I shall be hidden in your, from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So even though Cain did wrong, the Lord is um, putting a bit of a hedge of protection around Cain. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mahujael. Mahujael begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name was of the first was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore, bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in the tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the harp and the flute. As for Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. As for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Chapter 5. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that man, I'm sorry, in the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. And we know that to be true. We just read that. And I, he's just reiterating that, that we really are made in the image and likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind 
in the day they were created. And this is all a repeat of what we read yesterday. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. After he begot Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel, Mahalalel. After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. They had very, very long lives back there, you know, because you have to remember they didn't have anything but good in the land, um, probably no disease. Their, li their bodies really didn't know how to die. We were not made to die, but they had to die eventually because now sin had entered the earth, but they still lived these very long lives. So Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived, Methuselah lived 700 and 82 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Now, I don't know if you've been paying real close attention to all these numbers that we've been reading, but you've heard the term um, as old as Methuselah. Well, of all of these people that we've read, Methuselah was the oldest one. He lived almost a thousand years. So he lived to be 969 years old. He was the oldest of this whole group that we just read. So Lamech lived 182 years and had a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham and Japheth. Chapter 6. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants, so well, let's back up, so 120 years. So he's pretty kind of putting a limit on the our lifespan because we just read how people live to be seven, eight, and 900 years old. And now with sin in the world and the hearts of men growing cold towards God, God is saying 120 years. Now, most of us don't live to be that long, but that was the original intent, even after the fall. So there were giants in the land in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So you can see how far men ha man had fallen at that time. Let me read that again. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man 
was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So if you think about why the flood happened, that's why. Then the Lord saw, I'm sorry, then the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and his beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So this is what he instructed Noah to do. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with a lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall take, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will come to you and keep them uh, and you will keep them alive and you shall take for yourself all of the food that is eaten and you shall gather it to yourself and it shall be food for you and for them thus noah did according to all that god commanded him and so he did so the lord was very specific about what he wanted noah to do because he knew what he needed to keep himself safe to keep the um, animals alive to keep his family alive to keep them fed and um, secure during this time. So that's the end of chapter six. We will read chapter seven, eight, and nine tomorrow. I did want to stop and uh, just show you this prayer. You know, sometimes we have difficulty maybe praying, knowing what to say. And I think I may have shown you this book before. If I did, um, that's great. If not, I want to show you this. It's called Sparkling Gems. Um, there's a version one. This is version two. And it's from Rick Renner. And... It has also daily devotions in it. Um, and at the end of each devotion, it has a prayer for today and a confession for today because out of our mouths, we speak life or death and we always want to speak life over ourselves. So I just wanted to take a moment and read what the prayer for this particular day is. Um, this is actually back from March 27th, but when I was reading it, it's just actually beautiful. So um, I hope this blesses you. So I'm just going to read this prayer. It says, Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. And that's what we're doing. We are, we are reading the truth of God's word. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. I allow it to transform me into a new person by changing the way I think. And we read about that. We talked about that early on when we were reading the book of um, of Matthew and Mark about repentance and how repentance means to change the way you think, which will change the way you act, change the way you behave. So he's saying, I allow it, your word, to transform me into a new person by changing the way I think. Anytime I feel seized and squeezed by external or internal forces designed to take me down, help me to remember that there is no temptation that is not common to man. With every temptation that presents itself, you, Lord, also present the way of escape from it. I pray this in Jesus' name. And then there's a confession for today. So listen to this. Father, I declare, I declare that I make the decision to leave temptation in the dust. I choose to magnify the Lord and minimize every attempt to lure and appeal to my flesh through temptation of any form. I am not powerless or without authority and strength. 
I stand strong in the boldness, authority, and strength of God by the power of his spirit within me. Because I am born of God, I am an overcomer in this life, knowing that Jesus Christ himself and countless others have resisted and defeated the very same temptation. I choose to walk away from those silly temptations and the emotions that surround them. The Holy Spirit is bigger than any temptation that tries to come against me. I can simply walk away from it. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. And you know, we know that sometimes walking away from temptation is not just that simple. But I tell you, you put this word. I am so sorry. You put this word in front of you and you let this word um, get into your heart and into your mind. And it will change how you think and it will change how you act. And it will be, um, it will be just uh, beauty for your soul. Okay. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.